Hello, this is Craig. I'm going to explain to you the warm chicken project I've been working on for the last three weeks. And uh, I decided to do a little introduction here just to kind of let you know what you're going to see. Um, because <laughs> you're going to watch this and think this is the most ridiculously complicated project I've ever seen to open up a chicken door. And basically what I'm doing is I, I took a lot of technology and I replaced uh, this piece of string that we were using. And I'm going to go through in detail all of the various uh, aspects of what I ended up uh, putting into this project. And uh, the reason is not to make a project as complicated as possible, but it's to reuse a lot of things that I already had and to add a few little features at the end uh, as a simple enough project for me to learn about new technology and add it on to existing things that I worked worked with and because it's a it's a home project I, I had a lot of energy to actually put behind it and figure out this particular technologies so that I could apply that to my consulting work so I'm gonna read you to uh, I'm gonna read a list of the things that this uh, um, warm chicken project has well the first thing it does is the uh, it uses the Arduino libraries and the uh, uh, GCC so the app.pde file is straight procedural C and then there's a warm dirt class, so that's uh, object oriented. There, uh, it uses the uh, from an existing project called Warm Dirt, which I which is a project I did about four years ago. It uses this, the custom circuit board from that uh, design to run this chicken door. Um, it does sensing. It has an ultrasonic sensor to sense the distance. Of, of where the door is, uh, if it's closed or open, or where it is along the track. Uh, it uses uh, PTC resistors or thermistors for for temperature measurements. Um, it has a pulley that I put onto like a um, like a, one of these things. This is a brushed DC motor with a gearbox on it. I went and. Um, Use FreeCAD to do the modeling for this pulley, and I printed one up, and it didn't work out right. And you'll see a little bit of, of uh, failure on the first version of that pulley, so I printed another one. So I go ahead and draw uh, in th in FreeCAD to show you how easy it is to do do that in FreeCAD. Then I print the second version, which which worked fine, and I and I I show that. Um, on the warm warm dirt board there's a there's a part in there uh it is a l 6207d it's a um the dual h bridge and i'm using one of the uh, h bridges for the uh, motor speed control and i'm using the other one for led lighting so when we want the chickens to continue to produce eggs in the winter time we can introduce some artificial light inside their chicken house and so the warm dirt board will be able to control both of those at the same time. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi radio. It's got a Wi-Fi RN-XV. Uh, it's a thing that's like the size of an XV, but it's Wi-Fi. I have that in there. Um, I can do remote um, firmware updates over that Wi-Fi using uh, uh, AVR Dude. Uh, and it makes a TCP connection back into the board and resets the board and runs, jumps into the uh, Arduino bootloader and then it can load a new firmware over the air. Uh, let me see. Uh, for data exchange, I use JSON, JSON format. I kick all that stuff out into a Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry Pi 2. And on that Raspberry Pi 2, I'm running uh, MongoDB for uh, long-term persistent storage. And I'm running Redis for um, uh, temporary variables. And uh, I'm running um, on the Raspberry Pi, I'm running Node, uh, what I'm, Node as part of Meteor. And Meteor is a JavaScript uh, framework that is um, has a bunch of really nice features about keeping data current with the JavaScript front end and the JavaScript back end. And it really makes this project extremely simple to implement the dashboard because all I do is uh, the back end the, on the, the server side makes a JavaScript, the JavaScript makes a TCP connection to the warm chicken board, grabs this JSON off and parses it and shoves it into Redis. 
and then changes to Redis are read out and pushed out to the browser. Uh, I'm using um, Bootstrap for the CSS um, to do the rendering on the um, dashboard. I'm using the same Raspberry Pi 2 with a 2.8 TFT display from Adafruit. And I'm running a windowless, or a, yeah, windowless browser. I'm running, a, it's called Surf, and it is a WebKit-based browser, and it enables you to do um, all the very single JavaScript, but it doesn't have any window decorations. There's no title bars. There's no anything. It just runs the window right on the full, full frame of the TFT display. Um, so, <clears throat> and for real-time updates, it does this thing. Meteor has this thing called. Uh, DDP, which is uh, keeps the browser and the Redis database in, synchron in synchronization. There's a uh, demo on my YouTube channel about how I got that going and how how easy that is to, to do. And um, so it's uh, it's really <laughs> it's really quite complicated, but it's stuff that I had laying around here in my lab, and um, it really got to a point where what else could I put into this thing? to to learn about something new and i think i i i really some people would think this is so overly complicated but what it really gave me was a development platform to learn about technology and that's why that's why i make these projects so that i can learn about stuff in my for my own um, use at home but it is actually directly applicable to the technology that i um bring into my customers uh, project products so let's uh go ahead this video uh, shows the various steps of the build along the way it's about 25 minutes long and i want to thank you for watching so here's the uh door to the chicken house I'll go ahead and go in here and show you the the door that I rigged up. So I just cut a hole in the side of this shed, and then I put in a um, a couple of shelf brackets that screw on the wall. Those are my sliders, and I have a um, eye bolt down there. Then I'm running some 24 gauge wire up to my motor. This is a brushed DC motor with a gear um, gearbox on it and I have a 3d printed pulley over here and then my 22 gauge wire comes out through this hole that I just bored right through the 2 by fours so we'll go ahead and see if this works eventually I'm gonna have the warm dirt controller to run this motor up and down but for now we're just run it this way so I bring it up to a certain point I stop and I take the battery off and we got a design problem now the diameter of this gear, of this pulley, makes it so that the weight of the door exceeds the um, holding torque of this gearbox and this motor. And unfortunately, the way that the warm dirt controller is wired, the motor controller cannot apply a brake to the um, to this setup. So, I'm going to have to think of something else. So I think that what my solution is going to be is to print another pulley that has a smaller diameter and see if the holding torque is good enough. So, we're going to do that next.
All right, so a lot of people are uh, kind of commenting about the pulley that I had printed or that I designed to print it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did that. I'm using FreeCAD for that. This is a free um, 3D drawing program, 3D modeling program. It's available on all the platforms. So we'll open up the previous one inch pulley and we'll kind of show you how this looks and a couple features on this thing. So this is a very simple pulley. It has a couple features. The this is where the shaft goes through for the for the motor, and I put a little bit of a chamfer on this one side so you could get the motor in. Uh, put this pulley on the shaft fairly easily, and I also this is the hub part, and the pulley is outside here, and to save on material as well as print time, I kind of recessed this uh, connector between the pulley part and the, the hub. This pulley has a one inch diameter um, of this surface to the center of the shaft. That's going to give me, um, well that's what I need is a one inch diameter. Then I also made this uh, distance here about the right width for the when the wire gets spooled onto it, it doesn't overlap on top of, its, on top of itself. So we'll go ahead and show you how I drew this. First thing you want to do is come in here and you want to create a new sketch in the XZ plane. And I don't want it to be part of this one. Let me close this one up here so I don't screw this one up. How do I close it? There we go. All right. So I got a new sketch and I'm going to create a new, I got a new drawing, new sketch, I'm going to put it in the uh, XZ plane. And the way you do this pulley is you take a cross section of the pulley and you rotate it 360 degrees and that's how you actually render it in three dimensions. So we're going to use a poly tool for this. So if you can envision, um, I'm drawing the, um, I'm drawing a cross section of this pulley and I'm being pretty sloppy about it kind of here on purpose because I don't want to because I want to show you that you don't um, there's certain times in FreeCAD when you want to pay attention to what you're doing other times you don't so <clears throat> I have the basic shape that I want um, this is where the this is the this is the hub part that we're gonna we're gonna revolve around this axis first thing we want to do is close this guy so we're going to apply a bunch of constraints to this. So I want to put those two points together. I want this point to be on this line. And I want this point to be on this line as well. Then I want this point and this point to be centered to this axis here. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going to center a bunch of stuff here to the this one axis. And that's going to get everything aligned up for us. And that makes it um, be really kind of uniform. And then we can drag one point and the other side kind of changes. So we have all that. And I think we need to just do this one more. Well, it looks like there's a few more we got to do here. But you can kind of see it's taking shape. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want this surface to be perpendicular. So we make it this kind of constraint. And then the first uh, design, well, you see, well, I can change this around and everything moves and stays constrained. I want this is going to be where the wire sits on, and this is the center of the shaft. So I want this distance for here to here to be one inch. So I kind of come in here and pick a couple points. And I'm going to set this to one inch. You can see that I made this thing way too big. That's fine. We can stretch it and make it uh, the right size here pretty quick. That means this, this piece is too big. So you kind of see what we're doing. I need this to be a little bit, you just be a little bit higher just in case. All right. So that's the basic shape of our, uh, the cross section area of half of the pulley. All right, so you're going to close this and then you're going to use this tool here, which is the one called Revolve a Sketch. 
and you say I want to revolve it on the horizontal axis by 360 degrees and you can see that we now have our we now have our pulley with a with a hub on it let me see if I can grab this thing the right way here there we go so here's our pulley with a hub on it we just need one more thing we need to put our shaft the place for the shaft to go on this surface so we're going to create a sketch on that surface and the, what we want to do is come in here and draw a circle this is the going to be the diameter of the motor shaft and we'll set a constraint on it set the diameter we'll say it's um, I don't know what it is off the top of my head it's let's say it's 0.19 is the diameter that didn't work right oh yeah we got to do 0 0.19 okay and then we had that little key feature on there if you open that let me just open this back guy up again let me uh, close that and we'll open the we'll open up our one we're trying to draw here okay so the motor shaft is keyed it's got a flat spot on it so this distance here is some distance I don't know what that is but I'll show you how to do that so we'll come back over to our sketch here we're gonna draw a line we're gonna make this line the right distance we're going to add a constraint to this line of the distance and let's say that it is going to be uh, 0.25 it needs to be 0 0.25 okay so we have our line here this is what's going to but then we need to like attach this point to the circle so we're going to add a constraint to that and then we're going to do the same thing for that point onto the circle so now we have our our key that we cut out cut out of the circle the last thing we need to do is get rid of this upper arc so we use this tool which is called the uh, trim tool and we can get rid of that so now we have the shape and it's also it's centered on our um, right through the center of the shaft so that's a sketch we're going to take this sketch and we're going to uh, create a pocket and we want that pocket to go all the way through so now if we look at our pulley you can see that we now have a pulley with a shaft all the way through the last little feature we need to add is that chamfer to this one edge so we pick these two edges and we say I want this chamfer here I want to be that certain distance that's going to enable us to shove this onto the shaft a little bit easier and um, the other thing that you may want to may want to think about doing is if you were to these points up here this edge is pretty sharp so we can do that we can apply the um, we can apply chamfer to it as well if I can select it all right select those two apply the chamfer as well okay so that kind of rounds that edge off so here's our pulley it's looking pretty good it's kind of beefy but that's fine um, so now you want to 3d print this thing so the last thing you do on that is you click the last feature or the last layer that you added onto there and it selects all you come over here to export I'm, gonna, I'm in the temp directory now so I'm going to export a STL file and I'm going to call it chickendoorpulley.stl. There's one already in there, but I'm going to override it. Then I'm going to come over here and run Replicator G. Replicator G is a slicing program. So I'm going to open that STL file, which was chickendoorpulley.stl, and you can see. Oops, sorry, I didn't. I wasn't on the screen here let me do this again okay so I'm gonna open the pulley door the pulley the chicken door pulley and you can see that our pulley is not quite on the surface that's going to get printed so you need to move it the first thing you need to do is rotate it so you come and rotate it next I think you do no what do we do here there we go you rotate it next and then you're going to move it and you come over here and say put on platform okay so here's our pulley on the platform 
Oops, now I've done it. Okay. So if I want to move it around on the platform and have it come out on the 3D printer in a different place, I can do that. But ultimately, you want to end up on the platform. You don't want the pulley to be cut off. So it looks good. That's where it's going to show up. We hit generate G code. And I have this set up for a replicator, the replicator defaults. And I'm using this experimental slicer called Slicer Experimental, Slicer 3R. And it's going through and looking at the facets that are part of the STL file. And then it's going to go through and create the layers. There it looks like there are 314 surfaces. And so it's ripping through this thing pretty quickly. This little operation takes about a minute to do. You can kind of see what it's what it's going through when we get it done. But once we get the G-code, we take this and the replicator G will take that G-code and export it into a thing called a X3G file. And I put that on the SD card and put it in the 3D printer and I warm up the 3D printer and select my uh, chicken door pulley X3G file and I hit go and about 20 minutes later my, pull, my pulley comes out. That pulley will have a little bit of support material so I broke, you know, broke that apart and I have a little, I'll show you that kind of operation. But this literally took me five minutes to draw it and then you run it through uh, Replicator G, generate the, uh, the actual commands to run the 3D printer and you're, you're, you're pretty much done on the modeling side. So, when people say it's kind of extreme, why didn't I just buy a pulley for it? You know, I, the design, I didn't actually do any design work on looking at forces. And you saw that the, I had an issue with the first 3D printed pulley that I used, so I just printed another one. But this is done now, and if I take my SD card, so last operation, I hit pick the uh, an X3G file. And it's going to export out all these different uh, things and that's all done. So that's going to take about 10 seconds to do. Once that's done, we stick it in there and we print it and we're done. So here's the 3D printer. So here's the 3D printer printing out the pulley revision number two. It's about 90% done. It's been printing for about 15 minutes now. It's printing the top flange of the pulley. And you can see the support material there. Go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. So when this is done printing, I'll just break the support material apart. And we will put it on the shaft and see if the reduced diameter has enough holding torque to keep that door open. Here's what the pulley looks like when it comes out of the printer. It's got this support material in here and this is just um, kind of break this apart. You clean this out with a screwdriver you just kind of pull this out You kind of see it comes out. And it's got this little base on the bottom. You pull this off and then this, this part will be ready to test out. It's very stiff. Um, so this is going to work great. So we'll put on that motor and see how well it works. Okay, let's try number two with a smaller diameter pulley. And uh, let me get this other pulley over here. You can kind of see it's quite a bit smaller. This is a this guy had two inch diameter, this is a one inch diameter. So I'm gonna hook up to my motor. Door it's 
the speed of the door moving up is very nice, very slow. Any chicken should be able to get out of the way of that. Pulley's winding on to the under there just fine, and it looks like it does have holding torque enough to hold the door open without the power being applied to the motor. So now we'll reverse the polarity over here. The H bridge on the uh, motor controller is going to do this for me. And here's the way back down. Here's the speed of the door going down. It looks like it's probably going to be about, I don't know, take about 15 seconds for it to go down. And we'll run it up again, try it again. If I can hold these wires on here. Let's hold on, it's not... It's working, I just can't hold the wires on at the same time. There we go. Okay, it looks like it's now time to update the algorithm and install the motor controller. So I started the day by installing my exterior light sensor and temperature sensor right here on the side of the wall. Just drilled a hole in there and ran the wires right through there. We'll make this final video here pretty quick because one of those chickens needs to come in here and lay an egg. The one that's picking at the door is called lightning bolt. I'm going to put the controller right here. I added a couple switches here. This bottom one is a uh, auto manual button. It's through manual mode right now. This is up and down. This is a momentary um, switch that, you know, when you let go of it, it goes back. The door is currently closed right now. It's on these uh, shelf brackets. Down here I have a limit switch and I have an ultrasonic distance sensor. The distance sensor is capable of picking up the actual lip of the door right there as it comes up. And then here's my 3D printed pulley on a DC motor with a, with a gearbox on it. So I'll go ahead and run this up and you can kind of see the speed of this door. Takes about 20 seconds to get up. I'm going to go run it, run it back down. We don't want any chickens to get out today. I did make some modification to the software. Um, it was kicking out tab delimited format, but now it's actually doing JSON. I'm going to do a Meteor back end for this, so I want JSON to come out because I want to write this in JavaScript. So it spits out a series of key value pairs, temperature interior, exterior, light level, out exterior light level, the door status, the interior light level, the battery voltage, what mode I'm in, if the upper limit is engaged, and how far away the door is. This is a zero is all the way closed. So, this thing works great. If I click this back in uh, auto mode, we'll get a chicken in here. I'm currently running some LED lights um, for uh, winter production, as well as lighting inside the, the hut here. I'll go ahead and turn that guy on. The motor controller has a, has a um, dual H bridge in it, so I can control the speed of the motor, not just up and down. And then I can also run an additional motor or run some, some LED lights. So it was relatively simple to get this going. The thing that took a long time was fussing with this printer, well, fussing with this pulley, actually. And the last thing was the connectors that I chose for to be put on this board are absolute crap. There's 10 wires that I had to connect up today, and it took about an hour to get the wires to stay in the connector while I put them on. I know if I if I find these again I'll never use them I'm going to throw away the ones that I have
But uh, other than that, we're ready to go. I hear a chicken outside, so let's let him in. Come on in here, lightning bolt. So here's the 10 watt panel that I mounted on the outside of the chicken house. It just runs and uh, it's connected directly to batteries, there's no charge controller. This thing only puts out about 100 milliamps of current, which is just enough to keep these batteries fully charged. If we come over here, let me open this up, you can see the door is open. Here are the nesting boxes and we have two eggs today. So the last little part of the warm chicken project is a web interface and I'm currently evaluating the performance of a Raspberry Pi 2 running Meteor uh, with a Redis backend for the data store and so I decided to just queue it up here on this um, Adafruit 2.8 TFT display, 2.8 inch TFT display. So this display is uh, 320 by 240, uh, it's in color, and I'm running a, um, like a windowless browser called uh, Surf on this Raspberry Pi 2, and it is connecting to a Meteor-based backend, which is a JavaScript um, framework. And the JavaScript is actually uh, making a connection to the warm dirt um, board in the chicken coop which is broadcasting out um, the JSON document. It's getting parsed, it gets stuck in the Redis database and then the browser end of it does all the um, React type um, updating. It's very, this is a very simple project to work on using uh, Meteor. It's a little complicated getting it to run on a Raspberry Pi but once you get it running it works really well. So that's going to kind of wrap it up for this uh, this part of this project. If there are additional updates that I make, I will um, record some additional footage and uh, put it on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.